Hey guys, welcome back to Fun with Fallen Flags. I'm Michael McCarville. This is episode 39, weathering for coal hoppers. So, doing a little work in the storeroom, started to uncover some stuff. I knew I had a couple of structure boxes that were missing, so I found those, and then I started uncovering more and more and more. And really, I'm not a hoarder, but I did find a few kits that I need to build. <laughs> so, um, we're going to weather some coal hoppers, and I've got a couple of these. These are all built, so I'm good there. These are all Bowser kits. That's a GL hopper. This is a um, H21 hopper. This is a Tuscan colored one, so this is an older one. Later in life, the H21s got a, more of a black color. So you can see this one. Um, these are Pennsylvania Railroad hoppers. And um, I have a couple of these to build. So that's going to be our project. And we're going to weather the black ones. Um, we may look at the other ones at some point in the future. But we're going to have to do weathering specific to a black hopper. So we'll get into that later. Um, Bowser kits. They're great kits. They're inexpensive. Uh, this one when I bought it years ago was 11 bucks and even at the time 11 bucks you know for a prototypical you know relatively decent car um, is not a bad price um, I put KD couplers on everything and the wheels are uh, the ones that come straight out of the kit so I didn't put metal wheel sets or anything like that on it yet um, so typical with Bowser kits the lettering looks great there's a few parts to put on, nothing really elaborate. Really, I would call this a beginner kit because this really is not difficult at all. Um, there's not much as far as uh, brake lines or anything like that underneath. Really no detail. And there's even, it says it's got molded on places where it says Bowser and things like that on the underside of it too. So, you know, it's if you're looking for highly authentic underbody, um, you would have to add some of that yourself, but um, considering that it's out of the box and it looks the part and it's not expensive, you know, it's a decent little kit. Um, plastic coal loads are uh, come with the kit and they're painted kind of a kind of a semi gloss black to give it kind of a coal look, but it looks almost too plasticky, so we're going to have to tone that down a little bit. And there's also a little bit of a molded seam. That you can barely see that runs down the center you could maybe justify that and say well that's how the coal went in or something but uh, we probably want to disguise that a little bit especially if we're going to go ahead and do something with the the coal on top but the main purpose of this is to get these built and then weather the sides so that's our project this week so let's get to it uh, this is a bowser kit it is uh, kit number five four zero five three should look like that when we're done. Uh, it doesn't look that far away from that at this point. Um, the uh, shell is in one piece. Uh, the grab irons are molded on. The stirrups here are molded on. Um, so uh, it's painted and this one has lettering for uh, car number 909-345. It has a built date of 512. So I've already painted the weights that go inside here. I've already painted one side of these flat black, so you really can't see them when they're on the car. And I've already added a few smaller brake cylinder pieces that were on this tree to the, this uh, center frame. But other than that, it's got uh, fairly simple instructions. Uh, there's really not a lot difficult on this kit. So we're going to slap this thing together and then we're going to start weathering it. So it does come with the old style horn hook couplers. Uh, we're not going to use those. We're going to set those aside. Um, I've built a few of these already. so. I really don't need the instructions either. 
So we're going to put the trucks onto this frame. We're going to put these weights into these panels here. And then once that's done, the rest of this parts tree is essentially um, a few dividers that go inside the four bay hopper. And then there's a, a few pieces that go on the sides, little release um, mechanisms on the sides of the, um, of the bays. Um, and then it's got a brake system that goes on as well. There's a couple of wheels and there's uh, a mechanism that goes on here. So, and then a couple of pieces that go on the very bottom that cover this up. These guys right here, the doors to the hopper. Um, there's a little parts bag that comes with us as well. Two of the big screws are used to put the couplers onto the body after we put this on. Um, the other smaller screws were, you would use if you're going to use these uh, old style couplers. So we'll probably use those down the road at some point. Okay, at this point we can talk about the uh, options for the brake wheels. So you can see on the Tuscan car, the older car, there's a metal rod that the brake wheel attaches to, runs down the body, and then there's a little platform right here, and there's a smaller little um, eyelet that gets plugged in as well. So you glue those two pieces on, and the rod runs down, aligns with that, and then the uh, brake wheel goes on top. That's the Tuscan car, and they're all built that way. So on the more modern car, the H21, the black ones, um, there's a Ajax brake system. And hopefully you guys can see this. It's essentially one single molded piece that runs down the body along here. And then the wheel just actually glues into a hole into it. This whole uh, plastic piece glues onto the end of the car. And then the wheel isn't actually uh, sitting up, it's sitting flush onto this face, which is nice because it's going to probably get broken off a lot less frequently. So on the black cars, the, they're all getting built uniformly, so they're going to get built uh, with this style. So simplifies things a little bit and uh, certainly going to speed me up, that's for sure. All right, like I said, these are not difficult cars to put together, and we have our five built. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and start doing some uh, different types of weathering on here, and we'll do several different styles. Uh, just to note that it is a completely black car, so if you're going to do any kind of black wash on it, it's probably not going to show up. If you're going to do any kind of uh, coal dust or anything like that, it's going to dull down the shininess of the car. But we're going to have to do attack this in a little bit different way when, than we normally would with, um, you know, like a India ink and uh, alcohol wash to uh, bring any of the um, shininess and color and make it a little more grimy looking. It'll have some effect, but we want to attack this a little bit differently. Um, so we're still going to look at doing some rust, uh, not a ton. Uh, we want to do a pin wash to try to bring out some of these, but we can't use a typical uh, black pin wash like we would to bring out like the ribs because it would be black on black. It's really not going to show up. So uh, there's a couple different things we're going to do, and we also want to bring out a little bit of discoloration on some of the panels. Uh, so we're going to go through each of those steps, and uh, let's get our cars over to our uh, paint booth and our messy chalk area, <laughs> and we'll get started making these things look a little more grimy. Okay, let's get started. So we're going to weather this Pennsylvania hopper. Pop the coal load out really easily. Put that out of the way so it doesn't get smashed. Okay, uh, my son drinks an inordinate amount of Gatorade, so I use Gatorade caps to mix stuff in. Um, they're great, perfect size. I also have a lot of regular 
soda caps that are smaller like that but they're not as not as large and they're a little bit deeper so I use this for mixing up like uh, washes and things like that um, but if I'm going to use chalk I'm going to use this So first, I'm going to do this in a couple of layers. Um, I like to layer on powders, and then I'll shoot it with dull coat, and then I'll put another layer on. And I tend to uh, probably do about four or five layers on it. I'm going to do some rust on here, and I'm going to do some um, a little bit of a brown towards the edge just for road dust, and then... Uh, uh, we'll do a lot of uh, black soot on top of it as well. So I had uh, tried to do a little bit of a pin wash up the sides and uh, I use rust but by the time I have done this in the past on a black car um, what happens is you get the lines that move up a little bit and then by the time you put about your fourth layer on it's been completely closed off with chalk dust so I think I'm gonna this time I'm gonna just go with chalk dust and let's see how this looks in the past when I've used chalk dust I have uh, sprinkled it directly on the car but I'm gonna try to just do this a little more controlled Kind of put a few spots here and there. Okay, now I've got some dust on here. Now I want to fix it in place. Once you do a little dull coat on top of this, it's going to take the brightness off just a little bit. So it won't be quite as vivid red. Um, I also tend to do the bottoms of the cars with rust a little bit more. And any of the mechanisms, I will definitely do a lot more rust on those. So um, if you are going to start this and you're not sure what you want to do, um, either pick up a decent prototype book with photos in it or do a quick search and get some ideas of where they're gonna discolor so you notice that some of the bays like this one is a little bit heavier in uh, um, powder than this one this one I kinda just made it more of a v-shape and this one I covered the whole thing um, I don't want to do anything too consistent where I'm going to hit the car so it rusts in exactly the same spot. Also, each of the cars that I do, I don't want to have them look the same either. One car may have been in service longer or been in an area that maybe gets a lot more use and weather. Also, when you cover over some of the lettering, it's nice to uh, get that discoloration on the white. So then I'm going to take a little bit wider bristle brush. And you can see here that it, it'll make some streaks that go down the car a lot like it's going to rust. This section right here is pretty, pretty heavy. So I may turn that down just a little bit. And then I'll use a stiffer brush to take some of the edge off of this. It is pretty intense. This whole panel here looks like it rusted. Which is okay because some of the panels are going to wear differently. So 
And keep in mind, this is the first layer. So if it's a little vivid, keep in mind we're going to come across this with um, some different colors as well. So um, I'm okay with this looking this bright because in actuality, it really doesn't look so bad. And I know the dull cut's going to take a little bit off. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Spray it real quick. And we're back. So you can see the uh, the rust really got very subtle in there. You can still see these strong panels that got a pretty good coating of rust. And the P and the E in Pennsylvania uh, has still got that discoloration of the rust. But um, the next the letters next to it are still that nice bright white. And you can see some of the mechanisms here retained that rust feeling. This is V-shaped and it's really subtle and this is almost all rusted. The other thing that's nice about the chalk dust is as we go through and do this, it's going to take some of the, um, the shine off the side of the body and it's going to give it more of a texture. So we'll let that dry real quick. And we'll get our next color. So next I want to just put a just kind of a brown haze across the bottom section and we're going to hit the trucks matter of fact I forgot to do the trucks we'll do that real quick now keep in mind we're going to cover the trucks with chalk dust and then dull coat Um, with a couple layers as well so at some point in the future I'll probably do the uh, all the wheels but for now I'm just gonna get some discoloration on them so let me shoot that real quick little discoloration on the trucks you can always overdo weathering but you can also pull up some examples of some cars that are out there that are absolutely falling apart coated with rust too so you know there's always an example of what you're trying to do So anything we do to this side of the car, we're going to do the other side of the car as well. So I'm going to get just a little bit of light brown. And again, I have a couple of brushes I tend to use, mostly because they're just the ones that happen to um, be good for the purpose. And I'll try one brush for one function and think that it's really not working. So we're going to cover the ends with this brown. Pretty much you need to find out what works best for you and what you like, what uh, look you're going for. Every railroad is going to have different industries, different weather pattern, weathering patterns. All right. I'm letting the front of this dry. If I put chalk dust on it and it's wet, it's going to just kind of, it's not going to look good. It's The powder is going to turn into kind of a paste and you really want it to be completely dry before you start. Um, if you want to get a caked on look, almost like mud, um, then you know that would be the time to do it. But that's not what we're going for here. Uh, we can come back over when we're done and dry brush the brake wheels and the handrails and stuff, but 
they're kind of getting a good case of chalk dust at this point. All right, so I did the ends. I can actually see one of the panels has a little bit of um, dull coat that's just barely evaporating. So it looks like this side we can probably do. I'm going to do this really lightly. So this is just to simulate um, kind of just general grime that's going to come from use. So again, so we've got the paint color on. We've got some rust effects on top of the paint. Next is going to be the daily grime layer, which is going to accumulate over time. And then is going to be the uh, chalk, uh, is going to be the uh, coal dust, which is going to be towards the top and then some of the openings here. So we're going for le different layers the way that it would have been um, put on over time. And I just want to hit the bottom with this color. And I can't forget the wheels. Let's do the wheels. Uh, some companies will go through and um, offer whole powder sets. And I've been using the same pair of powder boxes. One is uh, b white through black and the other one is kind of a almost a pale yellow through black and uh, the name of the brand is uh, Weber Costello and I bought these 30 years ago and was using these when I was modeling in college and would go down to Caboose Hobbies and pick up something that I knew I needed to weather it so I bought some of these and tried them I've been using the same boxes ever since. Okay, so the first brush I'm using is more of an application. Some of this kind of spattered around a little bit. Get a little bit more down here on the doors. So another thing that this is doing is it's taking a little bit of that reddish edge off the rust, which um, looks great at first because it's so vivid. But by the time you get done looking at it, you almost think you're looking at like rusty metal armor, like you just got done painting a, you know, a sci-fi or Dungeons and Dragons figure that is so accentuated with the rust. And I've done my fair of Dungeons and Dragons figures. So, I like to try different disciplines too, because you pick up different tricks. Model railroad guys learn from the aircraft guys and the 135th scale armor guys. Uh, the other thing that's interesting is you have a uh, different scale of weathering, like the stuff you're going to put on a you know, a 285th micro armor tank is not the same type of weathering you're going to use for a, a you know, an O scale engine. It's going to be completely different because of the scale of what you're attacking. But you can still pick up stuff from each of those guys. All right. So it looks kind of grimy. We're going to take a little bit of this edge off now with some dull coat. So hang on, let's do that. Just jumped over to my table that is right behind me that I use for spraying. Um, so you notice that what I had before was a kind of brownish looking underbody uh, and this this area here the lower half of the the hopper wall and also some of these shoots but what you see now is it's not really all that obvious that there was a brown layer on there and brown got up in here a little bit uh, a few little streaks so that's gone um, it it added a little bit more subtlety 
to this and that's really what we're going for we don't want to you know wash the whole thing with rust and then try to bring back the black color um, what you're going to do is you're going to lose all of the lettering so but you do see some of the discoloration here uh, some of the lettering is kind of getting rusted like it's washed down so we're going to the next thing we're going to do is we're going to um, make this thing filthy with uh, coal dust. So the coal is going to get dumped in the top and overflow um, on here in just a few places. So we're going to want to get some of the coal dust to, um, like we did with the brown on the bottom, we're going to do with the coal dust towards the top. Um, and then just in general, if there's a space here like in the middle, for example, this whole panel uh, is very rusty. Um, I'll probably put a little bit of coal dust in the center just so you can see that it's not one solid piece of um, metal that has been rusted, but you get some kind of tonal variation in here. Uh, same thing with these chutes here. So these things load coal in the top and then they dump coal out the bottom. So you, this is going to kick up some coal dust around in this area here. We're not going to see coal dust in this area as much as we are here. So even though there's some rust on here, we're going to get a little bit of blackened um, variation on there too. Uh, we're not going to get coal dust on the wheels. We'll stay away from that, um, but we'll do the ends a little bit. And again, we've already kind of hit it with some brown, so we want to make sure that um, we get some coal dust on the sides, but you don't see as much variation on the ends as you do on the sides. So. And I don't know, maybe we ought to go back and add a little bit more, but we'll take a look at it when it's done. So at this point, we've got the rust panels. The wheels are rusted. They have a really good metallic looking color now because they've got rust, but it's not, you know, a solid color pasted on rust. It's got a little bit of variation. Um, and that's what really makes this stand out. So I'm going to go back to making my own chalk dust. And don't forget, there's a, I don't know, nowadays probably a $20 car. I got five of them. So I can do these, all of these in an afternoon and really not sweat it. I'm not using a different brush for this because I've already gone over this car a couple of times and then cleaned it off of dust. So. Just going to apply it. The other thing that's nice about doing this, this, this layered effect is the chalk dust starts to build up a little bit and it gets kind of a, almost like a gritty, grainy texture to it. I don't want to put chalk dust on this thing and cover the whole thing that I just did rust with. because otherwise what was the point of putting the rust on it? Uh, there's a little bit of heaviness right there, so I'm taking that off. And this is definitely a uh, an acquired skill. I'm certainly no expert, but I know what I like and I know what I want it to look like. And the more you do of this, uh, the better you get at it. Uh, when I did the coal shoots of the uh, Modern Coaling Tower, the Walters kit that I did a couple weeks ago, I actually left a lot of coal dust inside the shoots when I sprayed it with dull coat, and it got kind of lumpy, and it almost looked like, you know, powdered light fragments of coal that was left. And I like the way that looked. I thought that looked pretty good. Do a little bit in there, a little bit there. Again, we're just going for just some tonal variety. I don't want to necessarily wipe out what I've done, but I do want to get some streaking and I want to get some a little bit of where there it looks like there's a lot of pockmark coloring of the black that I just put on. And that's it. I, I don't want to wipe too much 
because I want to get this thing dull coated. A little bit much in the handrails. Oh, I think I forgot to do this side. This side looks pretty clean still. Can't have that. Uh, when we get done, we will flip the car over. We'll do the other side. Then we'll move on to the next car. Um, I'll do some still shots when I'm done so you get a good variety of um, the panels and see what they look like. So um, The more you put clump coal dust on here, the more I like it too. It just looks filthy when it's on there. I don't want to lose too much of that. Um, I think on this side, I'm, I'm going to just see what happens. I'm not even going to wipe it down at all. So let me go ahead and we'll spray this. Maybe do this a little bit more. If you're not sure and you want to go ahead and put a layer on, see how it looks. It's really easy to add another layer, but once you add it, it's going to be on there for a while unless you start repainting stuff. Okay. Don't know how you can see that, but We'll do some stills here in a second. Let me shoot that with dull cut. All right, and then we're back. Um, I will say, so we put rust on and a little bit of brown and black. Now, at any point, we can go back and we can add if, like, we decided that, you know, we've essentially wiped out all of the rust that we wanted. Uh, it's okay to add a little bit more. Um, but like, again, like I said, it's tough to take it off. So um, this is a really subtle um, weathering that I'm going for. I don't want to make it super rusty, but this is probably a little bit rustier than um, some of the, cars, the cars that I've done in the past. Uh, we'll let the dull coat dry, and then I'll take some stills, and then I'll let you guys take a look at it. Uh, we'll do the other side next so it's probably picked up a little bit of chalk that's fallen off onto the paper towel that I'm using so um, oh and the other thing is so it's easy to get uh, some of these colors to come out uh, black is really easy when you do an on black uh, lighter colors um, will show up a little bit more stuff that has color this light this light brown or dark brown um, might show up the light brown will probably show up better than the dark brown this rust if it's a dark uh, uh, engine you could even follow up with a little bit of acrylics and get some really bad rust marks and then uh, even do a little bit lighter rust um, but I've noticed that when I've used any type of really light coloring like the uh, white or a couple of light grays that are in here when I've used those and shot it with dull coat. The dull coat essentially just eliminates <laughs> any of the chalk dust that I've used. So some sort of whitewash or something like that uh, would be better if that's what you're going for. So anyway, I like what we have at this point. Also, when I when I put the uh, dull coat on it, I tend to coat it fairly well, but it may not be a 100% complete coat so I think we're gonna stick with that so um, I'm gonna leave the coal load in it so I'm not really gonna do too much with uh, weathering the inside um, I'm gonna go back and do a little bit around the top and then um, uh, paint that spray paint um, a, l a little bit of uh, dull coat on top of that I'll shoot some stills, I'll share those with you guys, and then that should be it for this project. 
the wheels, journal boxes, and springs got a shot of Vallejo rust texture, and you can see it in this shot. On the other side, I tried a bit of a pin wash of rust up the ribs you can see on this side, so jury's still out on which one I'm going to stick with. Coal load added, and that's it. So appreciate you guys tuning in. Enjoy the last few videos, and we'll see you on the next episode.